One of the many qualities of Allah Ta'ala is Halim. What does Halim mean? Allah Ta'ala is a forbearant. Allah is one who perseveres. Who despite having the ability of punishing, penalizing, destroying, yet Allah withholds Himself. Allah does not react emotionally to situations. And Allah's quality of tolerance and forbearance knows no limits. Allah's tolerance, Allah's forbearance allowed the statements of Nadar ibn Harith that, O oh Muhammad wasallam, if you claim to be the true Prophet, we are openly violating what you say, as you have warned us that Allah is capable of sending down the sky to collapse on us, we now challenge you, do it and show it to us. So throughout the times and the ages, Allah Ta'ala gave such grace. When Allah gave this grace, Man foolishly interpreted the grace as if Allah condoned the wrong he did. Well, we're doing what we're doing. I don't see any change in my life. I see no tragedies. I see no catastrophes. I see no setback. I doubt the Almighty has a problem with what I do. The Yahud used to come and greet Nabi alayhi salam. And they never used to say, As-salamu alayk. They used to say, As-salamu alayk. May death come upon you, O Muhammad. In ambiguity of speech, not very explicit, using vague language, but of course Allah revealed their ulterior motives. Then they used to go on and say, if he was a true prophet, the Almighty would have punished us for invoking curses upon him. We repeatedly curse him, yet no tragedy comes upon us. I guess he's not a prophet. Why doesn't Allah punish us for what we do? They said, if Allah had a problem with what we did, he would have prevented us. Why hasn't He divinely stopped us? Allah Himself says, O oh man, you are doing such wrong. But I also have certain visitors. And because of those visitors, I am not destroying you. Who are the visitors of Allah? Listen, humanity in its entirety. If it wasn't for those white bearded people, the words of the hadith, لَوْلَا رِجَالٌ وَصِبِيَانٌ and those innocent children that have been suckled by their mothers, Radeel, wa bahaimun rutta, and the innocent animals in the jungles, these are my visitors. If it wasn't for these categories, la subba alaykum al adabu subba, never mind one tsunami, I would have poured my azab on you every moment of yours. These are my visitors, and because of them I have withheld my azab. But your every action justifies and provokes my anger. There is none that is more tolerant and more forbearing than Allah. They associate partners unto Allah. Yet Allah sustains them, nourishes them and gives them help. Mawlana Muhammad Umar Sahib Rahimahumullah Nawwar Allahu Marqadahu used to say, Never mind when an earthquake takes place, that the earth is in Allah's control. It's not that the earth is out of Allah's control. He says, never mind humans, only that amount of ants will die in that earthquake, how much Allah has decided and decreed. Only that amount of ants precisely to the proportion of Allah. So Allah sends about these situations. I was in Canada when the tsunami took place. And the next day I was hopping onto a flight to Amsterdam. So I took the paper as is routine and I just browsed through. I read an article, I guess it featured across the globe and it took the front page of every newspaper. An article and there was a woman whose words were reflected and these were the words that she said, God, we did you nothing, why did you do this to us? We did you nothing, why did you do this to us? The calm oceans, the passive water, the wonderful breeze, the smooth ripples of the water, and when the order of Allah came, when the fire will emerge from the oceans, when that innocent child who was buried alive in present day terminology who was aborted, will be given life. What was the crime you committed that your parents mercilessly killed you? Allah speaks about what will happen to this water, how rough it will become. Yet when you enveloped by a storm in the center of the ocean, and death surrounds you, and crisis around you, then you abandon all your false deities and you turn to one Allah alone. When He grants you deliverance from the rough waters, from the high tides, and He takes you to shore, 
you abandon Allah, it's not the first time you always do this. One brother said, uh, now when I was in Cape Town, he says, I went for my holiday and I was at the ocean. And when this thing happened, I realized it. And from that day onwards, I caught my ears. I will never go back to the waters. Do you think you only in his control when you're in the water? Don't you know this land also belongs to him? This land also belongs to him. If this is what the water can do, the land can do the same. It's his command. Or he can return you back into the water and bring, the, bring back the same crisis upon you. So occasionally Allah Rabbul Izzat sends these situations to revive man, to awaken man.